Air Station, Lister City. My name is Townsend Hurst, and this is James Gardner, and we're both helicopter pilots here. We're going to show you around. Absolutely. Come on in. Welcome to our flight planning area. As you can see here, we have tons of publications that we use. We put a lot of these in our aircraft to help us navigate across the country. There's over 1,200 items here that we update almost on a monthly basis. And then we have Townsend Hurst here who has his uh, EFB, which is an iPad that helps him navigate. We call this our electronic flight bag. Essentially, this one little thing has everything that's on this wall that we need to be able to fly. This area is also our operations center. So whenever we get a call for a search and rescue case, all of the crew comes right here to get all the case details. Collective call, frequency one, tone. So we got a vessel taken out of water in the vicinity of Virginia Beach. get out to the helicopter, we'll walk around and make sure everything looks good to go and then we're ready to fly. guys now we're inside of our cockpit of our helicopter we have a couple controls that we use to be able to make this thing go forward up and back right here my hands on what we call a cyclic that allows us to go forward back left and right and down here if you can see it is what we call the collective that allows us to go up and down and then right down where my feet are are our pedals that lets us turn left and right we use all three of these at the same time to be able to fly forward, back, left, right, and up. As you can see, there are a lot of controls and switches in here. To learn how to train in a helicopter and become an aircraft commander from start to finish, it takes almost five years. You can see here in front of us, we have five multifunction displays. We can put charts on here that we talked about in flight planning so that we can see where we're going. Additionally, we have two engines on here, up to 1900 horsepower, controlled by these two power control levers. We also can carry about 6,000 pounds of fuel. If you look in front of us, you can see that we attached to the head. We have 200 feet of wired cable that can come down where the rescue swimmer can hook onto here and pick up our survivor. It can carry up to 600 pounds. And come on into the cabin, let's show you around. So once a rescue swimmer brings a survivor into the cabin, we have multiple things that can be able to treat the survivor. For one, we can use the basket to be able to pick them up. We also have what's called a litter back here in the corner. That's in case someone's really hurt and they can't walk around. Also in the cabin, we have this big orange box, which actually contains a dewatering pump. That's in case a boat's taking on water and is actually flooding. As you can see with all these switches here, it's a lot of work to start this aircraft. So to help us out, we have a long checklist to get her started. Engine start rotor engagement. Doors. Locked. Engine ignition switch. Norm. Fuel selector levers. Cross feed. Rotor brake. Is set. Backup hide pump. Off. Area. Clear. Number one engine. Fire guard posted. 
and all right the engines have started let's go fly